Okay, good evening, adventurers. Afternoon, sorry, it's not evening quite yet. Welcome. We're going to do the Friend of Nature Award. Um, you might find some things very similar to pasta. Um, that's okay. That's okay. The more you know, the merrier and the wiser you will be. So let's get started. So here's some of the requirements. You know, the first one is to explain, explain what, explain how to become a good friend of nature, how to pick flowers and when is it allowed, and how to protect our lovely trees and the things that inhabit it. Then we have list the names of three different trees and do a bark rub. Then we have collect four kinds of leaves and compare them, okay? Uh, we then have do one of the following. So you can either explore all things you see in a square box you place on the ground, or you can explore your yard or your local park and tell us what you see. Number five, do one of the following, you know, take a nature walk and collect some items, put it on a poster, or go visit a zoo park or a wildlife area. And the last one we have here is to grow one plant or bulb and make drawings of it at three different stages of its growth. Okay, so we're going to go through some of these today and hopefully you learn something new as we go along. So first things first, look at these lovely pictures. So nature is one of God's beautiful creations. Okay, and through nature, God is able to teach us, to provide for us, and we're able to learn from the beautiful um, creations God has made for us, okay? And through scripture, we, are, we as humans have been designated or tasked to protect all which God has created. And that also includes protect, protecting one another protecting our brothers, our sisters, our uncles, our fellow human beings. So nature is all about God's wonderful creation and what he took time in creating. So let's see what the Bible says about nature. How does the Bible describe nature? What does God say? And one thing is we can learn from the wonderful book of Job. It says, ask the animals and they will teach you or ask the birds of the air and they will tell you. Speak to the earth and it will teach you or let the fish of the sea tell you. Every one of these know that the hands of the Lord has done this. The life of every creature and the breath of all people are in God's hands. Isn't that wonderful? We can learn so much from nature. I don't know if you notice sometimes um, in the morning, you know it's mornings because you hear the birds tweeting in the morning. Um, in some countries, you hear the rooster cockering in the morning. Um, sometimes when there's a storm coming, you see all the birds swarming to warn you that there's something's happening. Or maybe, you know, I don't know. But you can always look at nature to learn new things and it can teach you new things and help explain the climate and the world around us. Okay, another one, if we look at Psalms 95, it says the deepest places on earth are his and the highest mountains belong to him. The sea is his because he made it. He created the land with his own hands. You see the picture I have in the background, they see all the mountains, how it's beautifully carved and how it stretches for miles and miles. That's all God. So whether you look at the mountains, the valleys, the ditches, the swamps, the grasslands, all created beautifully by God, okay? And we can't talk about nature, I think Pastor already mentioned it, without looking at God's wonderful story of how he created everything in Genesis chapter 1. And the key thing here, adventurers, is when God created every bit of nature of this world, he looked back and said, this was good. You know, he looked back and said, oh, he, he built, he um, created the beasts of the lands and the, the trees and everything. He looked back and said, wow, 
that was good. I did a good job. And if God is saying, wow, look at my creation, look at my trees, look at my flowers, look at my animals, we should look at God's creation and say, wow, this is great. And we should always be ready to look after it. So quick quiz. Um, might not have time to give me the answers, but if you type them quickly, that'd be fine. So the first one is, what did God create on each of these days? I want to just quickly type it. Don't worry if you don't have it in time. We'll move on. There'll be other chances for you to um, participate. So first one is first. Day one. What do we think God created on the first day of creation? Hey, adventurous. What was created on the first day? I know you know it. So please give us the answers as quickly as possible. Uh, here we are. Okay, the answers are flying in. Remember, it is nine seconds delay between Facebook and Zoom. And we will get the answers straight uh, from um, both platforms. So it is light. It is light. Well done, guys. Well done. Fantastic. Well done. So it's light. We go to the next one. You can find um, the book of light. The book of light, sorry. You can find that passage in Genesis chapter 1, 1 to 5. Number two, day number two. What was created on day number two? If you need help, you can find that in Genesis chapter 1, verses 6 to 8. What do we think was created on day two? All righty. Yeah, that's uh, going to be uh, easy for us. Uh, adventurers, uh, please use the comment section wherever you are, Facebook or Zoom, and please type in the answer you think is correct. What was created on a day two? Oh, um, Alberto, the answers are coming. And uh, maybe you will like them, maybe you won't. We'll see. Our <laughs> adventurers are saying that it is sky and seas. Fantastic. Thank you, adventurers. Well done. So, on day number two, God created the sky and the seas. He separated them, okay? The heavens and the um, below the heavens. So, fantastic. Um, day number three. Day number three. Do you, you know what happened on day number three? Yeah, that's in Genesis chapter one, verses nine to 13. If you need any help from that one. Uh, say again, Alberta, repeat the text for those who are uh, listing, uh, using their Bibles. Genesis, yeah, Genesis chapter one, verses nine to 13. Okay, and, and, the, and the answers, uh, answers are coming in is trees and plants. Okay, great. So God moves all the water into one place and then he created the land and on the land he created all our plants, our vegetation, our fruit bearing trees. So well done adventurers, super. Let's go to day number four. Day number four. Okay. You can find all about that Genesis chapter one verses so 14. To 19. What is, uh, what was created on a day four? Uh, the answer's already in. Uh, the Alberta. picture is right at the top. Okay, what have we got? Uh, at the moment, Alberta, uh, they're saying sun, moon, and stars. Well done, adventure. See, some of you have been going to your Sabbath school classes and going to your adventure classes. Well done. So the sun, moon, and stars stars was created on the fourth day can you imagine when God finished on the fourth day he looked up and like wow that was good okay so that's on the fourth day let's go to the fifth day what do you think God created on the fifth day and you can find that in Genesis chapter 1 verses 20 to 23 day five. Ooh, if you listen to the previous uh, presentation you could have heard, you had some clues there uh, reality is that yes. our adventurers are just too smart not to know this. So this is okay. They're saying marine animals and birds. Oh wow, super! Yes, so God created the birds to you know occupy the uh, the air and the seas and all the sea creatures. Well done. So the flying animals and the fish of the sea. Good. Let's go to day six. The last day of creation. I'm sure you all know the answer to this one. 
You can find Genesis chapter 1, verses 24, all the way to 31. What do you think God created on the sixth day? Easy one. Go on, guys. Oh, the day six. What do you think, people? Somebody said, is that true, Alberto? They're saying it's Adam and Eve. Ooh, well done. Okay, I will take that. Well, very good. So on the sixth day, God created all the land animals, the beasts roam all the earth, and he also created man. And you can find that all in Genesis chapter 1, verses 24 to 31. But God created man, and he gave man dominion all over his, his creation. And of course, you all know on the seventh day, he rested looking back and you looking at all over his creation and admired all the beauty all the colors all the animals all their what they look like their fur and he said it was fantastic so adventures when you're going out on your walks in nature when you open your curtains in the morning you see the sun and the stars i want you to say wow it was good so let's go straight into our requirement so requirement number oh uh, before we do that i've got one more game for you guys a little guessing game i'm going to give you four clues of an animal and hopefully you will guess what animal it is and these animals you'll find it in the bible okay do you so, like the game guys uh now let's guess the clues alberto you start okay so the first clue is I sleep during the winter. So in other words, I hibernate. Hmm. That's what the first that? clue. Is it the bird? The second clue is, yeah, type in, I'm an omnivore. Oh, that's a big word, which means I eat anything. I can eat anything that I, my eyes catch on. Is that okay? a thing? So I sleep during the winter, and I'm not sleeping. I eat everything. <laughs> Next one we have is, I'm big and furry. It's a very, it's a very fat animal. They're furry and they're very big. Any clues? Yeah, we have a lot the of answers. One. They are saying it is a bear. Well done. And the last clue I have here is um, David stopped me from eating his sheep. So well done. If you got a bear, congratulations. Good, good adventures. Next one. First clue is I'm part of the cat family. Ooh, I'm part of the feline family. Next one is I do most of my hunting at night. Ooh, so I'm part of the cat family and I hunt mostly at night. Oh, very classy, Pasta. Not quite. <laughs> um, I have large spots all over my body. Large spots all over my Ooh, body. Oh, this is not as easy as the first one. No. And last cue is I often get mistaken for a cheetah. Ooh. <laughs> so some of you might think it was a cheetah, but it's like a cheetah, but not a cheetah. Oh, Any ideas, guys? People are saying it is leopard. Fantastic, it's a leopard. Well done, guys. And God mentions leopard in Hosea chapter 13, about being as eager and swift as a leopard. So that's the leopard for you guys, very majestic creature. Next one, we have, I can lift sometimes more than 20 times my body weight. Ooh. It, it must be a big animal. Much bigger than its actual body. Next one we have is, I don't have any airs. Oh, what animal insect doesn't have any airs? My habitat is often called a colony. It's a very hard clue, I have to admit. Habitat is called a colony. I live in very packed areas. And the last clue is, some of you might know this Bible text, go to the blank, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. 
what answer do you have here? Wow. So all our adventurers that did this <laughs> award earlier in the beginning yes. of the program would know, but they are saying it is ant. Well done. It's an ant. Beautiful, small, but mighty creatures. And the last one, guys, for today. I am oft, I'm sung, I mentioned in the song, The Sea of Galilee. The sea, the sea. The Sea of Galilee, hmm, that's the first clue. Second clue is, Jesus turned two of me enough to feed 5,000. Ooh. Ooh, this, this clue. Is. It's an even better one, I have gills. What? I think I just gave the answer away there. It must be something that lives in water in that case. So the answer, guys, is? That, that is a fish, they're saying. Our adventure is saying it's a fish. Two plus is an easy one. Well done, guys. It's a game of play game. God has wonderful creatures, and they all are wonderfully made and specialized in their areas. So let's make sure we admire them. Let's go on. So the first requirement is to explain how to become a friend of nature, how to pick flowers and when to when is it allowed and how to protect trees and nests and the things that dwell in trees let's get started so i think pastor mentioned this before in the presentation take nothing but memories leave nothing but footprint which basically means when we're going out into nature when we want to be good friends of nature we must always remember just to take memories take pictures just admire all of creation and do not damage it in any way. So one way we can protect our nature or become good friends of nature is to admire it and look upon it. And here's some answers here. We can be a good friend of nature by discovering, getting a magnifying glass and looking at all the wonderful insects we see on the floor and seeing how they how they bond and mix with each other. We can explore, we can go on lovely hikes, and lovely trails, visit different countries, all in all making good memories, okay, and keeping it clean. That's how we can become friends of nature. So the little boy there with his camera in his hand, picking up litter, drawing pictures of nature. That's all how we can become good friends of nature. Remember, God has tasked us to look after his creation. Okay, folks? I'm going to move on. Okay, so how do we pick flowers? So we've got a little girl here picking flowers. We're going to learn some do's and don'ts about picking flowers. And when is picking flowers allowed? So if you're at home and you are in your garden and you have flowers in the garden there are some rules or some things you can do some tips you can do for your own flowers at home in your house or your parents house or grandparents house so first thing is first is to it's best to pick flowers either early in the morning or in the evening because if you pick them during the day the sun's being down on them and they become all dry Okay, but in the morning, in the night, it's much cooler. They have a little bit more moisture on them. So they'll be able to survive. When you cut them and you place them in water, they're a bit more healthy and ready to grow and continue. Okay, so we're gonna cut flowers or pick flowers that are ready to bloom. So I'm gonna show you some pictures in the next slide of what I mean by ready to bloom or just, just popping out. It's when they're coming out of the shell slightly not all the way up, but just slightly coming out of their buds. That's the best time to pick our flowers. And then we're going to cut our flowers in an angle. So we're not cutting them straight. We're going to cut it at an angle. So it's a little angular cut. And that helps to absorb all the water a little bit faster. And last thing, we want to put them in water straight away. Don't cut our flowers and just leave them on the side. They're going to pass. They're going to die. They're going to wither away. So as soon as you cut them and cut your selections, put them into a vase of water. So here I have some flowers in their bud form. 
Okay, so top will have some daffodils. See how it's not quite all the way open, but it's just about coming open. Then I have some daisies in this in the pink one. And lastly, I have some peonies. Peonies, peonies, sorry. How do, I, how do I pronounce that? Okay, so just coming out into blue. That's the best time to pick them. And some don'ts. So when you're out in the park, in your local park, or if you're going on a nature hike, there's some things you must not do because it can get into trouble sometimes. So if you're going to the wild and you're going to the parks, okay, try not to pick flowers that are in someone's private land or in someone's um, farm because you might not have permission to pick their flowers and you could get in trouble. And if you're in the local parks, in your communities, that's also considered um, private, private property. So we shouldn't be picking too many flowers. But if you are picking flowers in the wilds, like in a country park or in the woods, you can pick flowers, but do not pick flowers. Don't pick all the flowers. Pick at least two or three flowers that are in full bloom, okay? Flowers that are, there are many around. If it's the only one flower of the kind, don't pick that one, leave it to grow some more. If you see that there are hundreds of flowers there, yeah, you can pick one, okay? And the last one is do not dig up flowers. No, no, no. As Pastor said in his last video, in the last presentation, we shouldn't be digging up flowers and digging up trees. Leave them, just cut them if there's enough to, of them to cut and leave them as they are, okay? Remember, leave, take nothing but memories. So instead of picking them, you can just take pictures of them and leave nothing but footprints, okay, guys? Okay, so just to answer in your worksheets, you can pick flowers when they're ready to bloom by using some garden clippers, okay, folks? I'm gonna move on. Okay, so trees, how do we protect our trees? I often give a tree a nice big hug to show that I love them. I'm sure you all have trees in your back garden, not park, they can give a nice hug. So trees just like, how do you protect our trees? So, ooh. yes, how do you protect our trees? So first things first we can do is, we can recycle paper. How many of you have a recycling bin at home? Just say yes or no if you have a recycling bin at home. Do you all have recycling bins at home? Yeah, super. Yeah, yeah, guys, if you do have it, please say yes or no. We would love to know. Yeah, and it doesn't need to be always council bin. You actually can start your own recycling. A bit. Yes. So, yeah, yes. uh, uh, in Alberta, we have a, a, a quite a few yeses, one no. So yeah, maybe challenge for people okay. to create. Yes, so that's your homework, guys. If you haven't got a recycling bin or recycling box, create one. We need to start recycling because the more we recycle, the less trees we will damage, guys. So recycling and stop printing. I know mums and daddies are probably working from home. And you might see them printing lots of paper, say, mommy, daddy, you shouldn't be printing so much papers. We can use our online, we can use our phones and the tablets. So we encourage them to save paper, okay? That can also help by going online. So instead of printing our books or printing paperwork, we can just go online and we can see everything we have online without printing anything. We can place bird feeders to help our trees to create more visitors by our wildlife, okay? We can put rubbish in the bin, that's very important. We can walk or cycle, okay? And we can create a bug hotel. That can, we'll talk about that more later on today. And we can plant more flowers and bushes, okay? And that's all to help our trees and the things that live in the trees, such as birds and nests, okay? 
Some throat there. Okay. Some throat there, some throat there. So question. having them three list, two, sorry. List the names of three different trees and do a bark rub. Okay, so just like us as human beings, as boys and girls adventurers, trees are very different. They're very very. They come in all shapes yes, and all sizes. Hold, hold, hold so it's very important that we look yeah, after our trees and, and we appreciate how many, how different they are in their variations. We like trees are special. We are unique. We are wonderful, and we all have our unique greatness about us. Okay. So the first tree I did. Is a tree that you find everywhere, especially in London. On every street, you will find this tree, okay? And it's called the Magnificent London Plain Tree. <laughs> That's a bit funny, a London Plain. It's a plain tree we see everywhere. And this is my tree bark rubbing. So if you see on this, on the right-hand side, the, this tree has shells, so I have an outer layer. So you, can, you can sometimes pick off, okay? It sheds most of the time. So the flat bits you see here, all these flat grainy bits, and then the rough outlines are its shells, okay? So this tree has a unique fingerprint, okay? So how do you do a bark rub? Well, we get a piece of paper, we place it on the tree, and we even a crayon or a pencil, we press on the tree and we rub, 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 rub. And we finish rubbing, we should see a little fingerprint of the tree. Okay, so that's the London plane tree. Our next tree I have is what we call the yellow poplar tree or the black tree. And that's often in London too, you find that everywhere. And you see how this one is different. This tree's fingerprint is going like long, broad lines up and down the tree. And you can see from my bark rubbing, these rough bits here are its grooves, okay? And you can see that that belongs to the London main poplar tree, the yellow poplar tree. And the third one I have is one of my favorite ones is the white birch or the silver birch tree. And they often have rather smooth um, skin with little grooves, little sheddings across it. You can see here in my drawing, these little dark spots. It's like a little grooves, a little chips down this bark. Okay. So for your homework, guys, I want you to find three trees, a couple of trees, put a piece of paper on it, get some crayon or a pencil and do some bark rub and send it to Natalie and Pastian so we can all see your wonderful bark rubs of your trees. Okay, folks, so that's your homework to complete your requirement. Okay, so next part is to collect four different leaves and compare them. So let's do some comparing, guys. So let's get out your keyboards and let's look at the first two leaves I have for you. So this is my leaf number one. Have a good look at leaf number one. And here's leaf number two. So who can tell me what they can see? What's, what looks the same and what looks different? I wanna hear some of your responses. So what looks the same and what looks different? Okay. Uh, so uh, we uh, actually would be able to unmute. Uh, uh, so ha Hansel, tell us. All right. Maybe not. Okay. Uh, uh, put it in a chat section. Uh -huh. Different shape, they're saying. Yeah. Uh, same color. Yeah. Uh, Gina says... They're both green. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, tell us a little bit more about it. They're fantastic. Well done, guys. So yes, they're both green and they both have two different shapes. So one looks more like a spade.
spade shape with your play cards. Oopsie. With like a little spade. Okay. And the other one is like a little Christmas tree or um kind of. Like a little zigzag. Okay. When you do it at home, you can feel there's a different. One is very got sharp ends around it. One's got a little rigid end. And if you look on the inside, their spines, look at their veins. So on this tree, I think this one is a London plane tree, actually. London plane? Let's have a look. Mm, no, London plane. But you can see this one, you see the veins are very sharp and very green. This one, they haven't got much veins. They see more grooves. Okay? That's my two trees here. Next two, you can do the same thing for me. Actually, I'll speak for you. So again, so these two are very different. So the one on the left, number three, is our London plane tree. And you can tell they're London plane tree because the leaves look like the Canadian flag leaf. Okay, if everyone's seen the Canada flag, um, they leaves look um, like the London plane leaves. Okay, so the London plane one, number three, they're much bigger, they're fatter and a bit darker. And the one on the right, which is a holly, it's a bit, it's thinner. Okay, it's lighter and it's got a very smooth top. Okay, and his veins are not that visible compared to the London plain one. Okay, so those are my four leaves. I encourage you guys when you get home to collect your four different type of leaves. Okay, let's go to our next one. So number one. Explore a garden or park and tell us what you see. So I'm gonna do this one because it's much easier one to do online, of course. So I'm gonna show you guys a video. And while you're watching that video, I want you to type into the into the chat room what you see. If you see anything that's natural or unnatural, I want to see what colors you see. And what shapes possibly you see. Just type as much as you want in the chat room and we'll hear your feedback at the end. There's no sounds on our screen. So I'll see what colors you see. Do you see anything natural, anything unnatural that shouldn't be there? What shapes do you see? Wow. There's going to be a lot of comments coming through for sure. So guys, let us he hear from you what fits here, what doesn't fit, colors, shapes, and everything that Alberta mentioned. You know, it is it looks to me, about it is the same garden, uh, but different pictures. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so let's have a, let's hear your comments, guys. Somebody is saying a lot of plants. <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, some leaves. All righty, comments are slowly coming in. Make sure, guys, you, you keep uh, uh, writing. Uh, people are mentioning trees and the grass, bushes. Uh, somebody is saying plants, also wood chip. Is that something that belongs okay. there or it doesn't belong there? It's a question. All right, we have sky and a few other things there. Alberto, is this a video or is this a slideshow? This is a video, so I've made this video. Oh, I'm very good. At the end. Somebody says a sun and a few other things. People are mentioning uh, on Facebook uh, green plants that comes from uh, uh, from few people. And then we have nature and a few other comments from Facebook. So small trees, as somebody mentioned the gates. My little friend here. I'm surprised. Let me get this close to it. Oh, Look. that looks like a gray American squirrel. That squirrel owns that garden. That's the reason why I let you come so close. <laughs> the squirrel was okay. like, "What are you doing in my garden?" All well, right, thank you guys, for viewing that. So when you go out into the park, into the garden, I want you to do the same thing. Take a look and write down as much things you see as possible and put it in your book. In Excellent. Your book. Okay, Excellent. thank you guys for playing with me. Okay, so the next one is to visit a park. I did, I did the first one. So I went on a walk, actually just saw, and I picked up some items and I actually put them in a little bag, a little pouch. 
so I can just do a little show and tell. Or what you can do, guys, you take pictures and you put the picture on the little poster. So I'm going to show you my little poster that I created when I went out to hey. see my animals. Also, when you create your posters, make sure you send us. We would love to show the world what amazing adventures we have. And I posted uh, my email address, which is dayanadventist.uk. Please do send it. We publish it on, we publish on Wednesdays. Thank you, guys. Yeah, guys, we'd love to see all the things you collected on your walk. So I collected this one, um, a little picture here. This from a sycamore tree, or you can camp by some of them on a plane tree. This is the buds you can see hanging from some of the trees. I saw that on the floor. This is one of my favorite trees in the park next to my house. This is called a sweet gum tree. And they have beautiful, sharp, extravagant leaves coming out of everywhere. So that's that one. I also found a feather. A, looks like to be a pigeon feather. Um, that's the most common bird we have here in East London. and looks like a pigeon feather. So that's the pigeon's feather. That I found. Then I found some acorns, or these probably the turkey. The ones in our park is probably the turkey oak tree. This is the acorn and the shells. And the last thing I found, we have a little pond in my local park, and there's lots of different pebbles. I didn't, I didn't know which one to pick, so I just took a little picture of the whole pond. Um, some pebbles. I there. love, I love your, I love your collection, Alberto. That that's excellent work there. Thank you for that. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. So guys, please, when you go out for your nature walk, take some pictures of your what you see and put on a poster, or do a little show and tell, so we can have, we can share with, we, you can share with us, your wonderful community. Okay, so we're coming to our end. The last thing we have to do is to draw a picture. So I didn't have time to do this one myself, but I've got a picture here, which again, it can be for your home or to our home, is we have to draw the pit, uh, a plant growing in three different stages. So I have a plant here, a little rose growing, and this is it at three different stages. So the first stage is this little bud just peeping out of the, of the stem. And then the next thing you see is it developing leaves. And the next thing you see is, is full grown blossom. So your homework is, I want to see the lovely artists among you, is to draw these images in its three different stages. Or if you want to plant your own plant and your own um, flower, that's absolutely fine. And you can wait for it to grow. And if you see it growing at three different levels, draw a little picture or take a picture of it so you can see it developing at three different changes. Okay, it's wonderful to see how they grow into something so small, a little seed, a little plant, to something so beautiful and majestic. And that's the whole point of this exercise, to see how wonderful God's creations grow and develop into magnificent, colourful creations. Okay, guys? So that's all your six requirements for you. And I've got some extra treats for you, which you can do at home. So first things first is you can create a pledge card. It's very important, adventurers, that you look after God's wonderful planet. So you can create a little pledge card here. The link is um, attached here. You can print it up and stick it on your wall or on your fridge that I pledge to keep my planet or keep my community um, safe, clean, and good for the environment. Okay, guys? That's one thing you can do, okay? Create a pledge card. So I pledge to look after God's planet or God's nature. Okay? That's the first thing you can do at home. And the second thing you can do is create a bug hotel. What's a bug hotel? So if you have a garden, absolutely fine. You create, you can put some mesh together, some wood piles together, some grass, some mud, some dirt, put it all together in a little hut, and you can invite some animals, some insects in. And once you invite the insects in, you can invite other wildlife, like hedgehogs, badgers, and they're all coming to eat the insects. So you create a little habitat there, and it creates a little nice environment in your garden. And the link on how to create that is attached on here. So you have lots of work to do, adventurers. And I do hope to see lots of your pictures, your videos, your arts, so we can see how you are looking after
God's nature and God's planet. So thank you very much for participating and have a good, good week, good weekend, guys.